Hello and welcome to today's snapshot of history. Today we're exploring legendary Renaissance painter Michelangelo and his work on the Sistine Chapel. The chapel is top of any tourist to see list in Rome, or at least I certainly know it will be top of mine and whenever I get the chance to visit this wonderful place. So what frescoes did Michelangelo create? What were his views on this project? For the next five minutes we're going to be taking a deep dive on Michelangelo and the Sistine Chapel. But first, a little bit of context. The Sistine Chapel is located within the Vatican Palace in the Vatican City, Rome. It was built for Pope Sixtus IV in the 1470s, but it took decades for it to be decorated and completed. Many artists worked on this chapel, including Sandro Botticelli and Pietro Perugino. This was during the period we refer to as the Renaissance. The Renaissance, literally meaning rebirth, emerged through a series of gradual and sometimes subtle changes which began around the 1300s. It pulled Europe out of the Middle Ages and into the start of a cultural revolution, gathering momentum by the 17th century. Italy was at the centre of this rebirth, but it's important to note here that Italy was not one unified country during this period. It was a collection of city-states like Florence, Milan and Venice. There were different leading families who dominated Italy's political sphere like the House of Medici and the House of Sforza. The successive popes of this period usually came from a leading family and through nepotism sought to benefit their house. These leading families were incredibly wealthy and often funded artistic commissions, with Michelangelo and his famous contemporary Leonardo da Vinci benefiting from these noble commissions. The artistic works created during the High Renaissance have had a lasting impact until this day. Michelangelo's frescoes are on the ceiling of the chapel and show scenes from the Old Testament. He was given the commission by Pope Julius II of 1508. It was considered an odd choice by some, perhaps, as Michelangelo was more of a sculptor than a painter. His sculptures David and Pieta are particularly well known and revered. Apparently, the Sistine Chapel ceiling commission was the result of the deviousness of his artistic rivals, Raphael and Bramant. They encouraged the commission to go to Michelangelo, hoping he'd fail. Michelangelo ultimately proved them wrong, but that's not to say he didn't face challenges creating this gigantic piece of work. A letter survives from 1509, a year into the commission, from Michelangelo to his friend Giovanni da Pistoia, detailing how much he hated the process. It's written in the form of poetry, and it goes something like this. I've already grown a goiter from this torture, swollen up here like a cat from Lombardy, or anywhere where the stagnant water's poison. My stomach squashed under my chin, my beards pointing at heaven, my brains crushed in a casket, my breast twists like a harpies, my brush above me all the time, dribbles the paint so my face makes a fine floor for droppings. My haunches are grinding into my guts, my poor ass strains to work as a counterweight, every gesture I make is blind and aimless, my skin hangs loose below me, my spine's all knotted from folding over itself, I'm bent taut as a Syrian bow. And because I'm like this, my thoughts are crazy perfidious tribe. Anyone shoots badly through a crooked blowpipe. My painting is dead. Defend it for me, Giovanni. Protect my honour. I am not in the right place. I am not a painter. As this letter shows, the painting of the frescoes took a huge toll on his physical and mental well-being. He had to build his own scaffolding in order to get to the ceiling, and once there had to hang upside down to complete this work. He did this for a staggering four years, completing the project in 1512. He must have been incredibly relieved when it was over. Throughout these years, Pope Julius was impatient for the work to be completed quickly. Considering the scale of the project, this can be seen as a pretty unfair ask. The animosity between painter and patron became well known, although their friendship endured despite their differences. So for those who've never seen it, this was the final design. On the central ceiling, there is the nine stories of Genesis, including the creation of Adam and the banishment from the Garden of Eden. On the long sides, there are alternate panels of sibyls and prophets seated on the thrones. The short sides feature Zechariah and Jonah. The four pendentives showing the salvation of the people of Israel. And lastly, the eight spandrels show a group of figures thought maybe to be the ancestors of Christ. To frame these images, Michelangelo painted architectural moulding. In short, it is a complete and utter masterpiece, and I cannot wait to see this Renaissance marvel for myself one day. Have you seen it? What are your thoughts on it? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below.